In this video, I'm going to show you how you can improve the inference speed of a fine-tuned with Qora large language model from this to something that is four times faster like this. Hey everyone, my name is Benelin, and in this video, we're going to have a look at techniques to speed up the inference time of your large language models. We're going to load the model in the configuration that we've used to fine tune our previous Falcon 7B model. Then we're going to load the model in four and eight bits and compare the results. Finally, we're going to have a look at the batch inference technique in order to speed up the inference time when we have more than one prompts. Of course, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a bonus technique using a library called litparrot in order to speed up your inference even more. And we are going to compare the results with our manual implementations using the transformers library to what the lit parrot inference time is. Let's get started. There is a completely free text tutorial available on mlexpert.io. It is within the prompt engineering guide, faster LLM inference. Here you can also find a link to the Google Club notebook along with all of the source code and explanations on how you can run and install all of the required libraries. I have a Google Club notebook that is already running and I've also pre-loaded the Falcon 7B with QWARA model itself. And you can see that the GPU memory is about 16 gigabytes of VRAM and the model itself is taking about 5.7 gigabytes. Note that this also includes the QWARA adapter that we fine-tuned in the previous video. And another thing right here is that I'm using an instance with high RAM since this is required in order to load this model. All right, so recently the Transformers library has released a newer version, which is 4.30, and this version is now supporting QWARA and 4-bit loading out of the box, so we don't have to load this library or download this library from a Git repo. And these are the pretty much all of the dependencies that you are required to use this tutorial. And we have the bits and bytes library, the torch library, then we have the accelerate and then PEFT. And these are all of the supporting libraries that we also need. So the first thing that I'm doing here is to add the imports. We are going to use Torch, the PEFT config and PEFT model, and then we are going to use the auto model for causal language modeling, then a tokenizer and bits and bytes config. So the first thing that I'm doing here is to get this tokenizer, which is essentially the RAW or the original tokenizer from the Falcon 7B model. And I'm also setting padding side equal to left, since we are going to do batch inference at the end of this tutorial. And then I'm padding the token with the end of sequence token, which is essentially done for all of those Falcon models. And this is the example prompt. What is your return policy? This is a question that was provided in the FAQ from the previous video in the data set. And we know that our model along with the QR adapter is actually fine-tuned on this data set. And this is the format for it. So let's encode this. And if you don't know what the encoding contains, it is basically the input IDs, the attention mask, and the token type IDs. Pretty standard for each tokenizer, I would say. So this is the first or the baseline on which we are going to try to improve. And here is an exact copy of the bits and bytes config that we've used in the fine tuning video. You can see that we are loading the model in a normalized float 4. This is from the QR paper. Then we are also requiring the model to be loaded in 4 bit. And then I'm using binary float 16 or B float 16 as a type. And this is how we load the model. We are passing in the BMB or bits and bytes config to it as a quantization config. And then we are letting the model to run on auto device. In this case, we are using the CUDA device. And it takes a while to download the Falcon 7B model. And then we are loading the adapter on top of this. This is from my repository that is available on Hugging Face. 
So this is the generation config that is going to be standard for all of the runs. And the most important part here is that we are going to use max new tokens equals to 20. Since the generation of tokens is highly, or the speed of the generation of tokens is highly dependent on the time or the number of tokens that we're going to require. And 20 is something that is rather small, but still usable for us to understand how the models are performing in different settings. So I'm going to execute this, a temperature of zero since I don't want any randomness based on the temperature, and I want a single sequence to be returned for each model. And here is the way that we are generating this output. So I'm going to let this run, and I'm going to explain what is happening here. So first we are using the time it, and this is essentially running this cell for five times. This is the R five argument right here. And we are doing this in inference mode with torch and then generating using the inputs, the attention mask and the generation config from previously. And I want this to use the cache uh, in order to speed up the following uh, inferences. And I don't want to sample any of this. And you can see that this is taking a while since this is essentially the way that we did inference with our way of uh, fine-tuning the model itself. And then I'm going to show you how you can ex essentially do the same thing and decode the tokenized output. It took a while to generate the five runs. And you can see that the average time here is 13.3 seconds. And this is the output of the tokenizer. What is your return policy of the model? Our return policy allows you to return eligible items within 30 days of purchase for a full refund. So pretty good response. And you can see that this is very, very slow. Uh, I mean, like it's not really usable in the real world. So the first thing that I'm going to try is to get all of this and replace the BNB config with essentially what in 4 bit, which is provided by the transformers library. Note that when I do this, I'm going to actually restart the runtime since uh, this might not be enough memory for the model to run. So I'm going to run this and I'm going to tokenize this. I'm going to go to the 4 bit. And then essentially the same generation config and the same time it. And then we're going to have a look at the generation output from this. The results for the 4-bit evaluation are already in. And you can see that we have a very nice improvement. In the other case, it was 13.3. And here we have 9.28 per whoop. So this is a good improvement. And here is the output. What is your return policy? Our return policy allows you to return most of items within 30 days of purchase. Please see our returns. So the output is slightly different, but still good enough, at least from this one, what we can see. So next, I'm going to again restart the runtime to make sure that everything is working from a starting point. And we are going to do the next step, which is to vote the model in 8-bit since we need to try this. And this is supported by the Transformers library as well. Even though we've trained the model in 4-bit and it shouldn't be faster to train the to run the inference in 8-bit, we'll see whether or not this is true based on this experiment. The 8-bit results are here and these are the times. So you can see that we are passing through a whoop on average for 3.04 seconds, which is a great improvement over the 4-bit loading and then even much, much greater improvement over the original training config loading. So you can see the inference time is much better and the response is pretty much the same as the 4-bit loading method. So another way to train or test this is to use the torch compile which is very popular in order to increase or try to increase the inference speed of your models. Note that we are combining the PEFT wrapper 
so we are not actually combining the Falcon 7B model. And you can try to compile the large language model and rerun these tests. But at least from the compile, uh, you can see that it doesn't have an improving results uh, and it is actually decreasing the inference time, at least for those five whoops. So this is something that is not uh, working, at least for this path dropper. I've restarted the runtime and this is the final method that we're going to have a look at. It's called batch inference. And what this essentially does for us is to pack a lot of prompts. And this depends on the GPU memory that you have. In our case, we can run four or probably even more. I haven't tried this. How many can fit within the GPU memory? And I'm passing in the prompts through the tokenizer and I want padding and truncation. So these are properly converted into a batch of the correct sizes. And then I'm going to load the model, which is essentially the same thing. And the generation config, and then I'm going to do inference and get the output of all of these. And these are the times that I'm getting with the batch inference. You can see that we are getting pretty much the same, whether or not we are getting a single item through here or four prompts. So this is great. And these are the responses that we're getting from the model. So they also seem pretty adequate. So if you really want to speed up your large language models, at least compared to what we had previously, you might want to consider batch inference and then consider loading your model in 8-bit precision. So this seems to be working very well and provides much faster response times compared to what we had originally. Another popular method is to use a library that does everything for you. So for this, I'm going to delete this runtime and I'm going to show you this library called litparrot. So the litparrot is a library provided by the PyTorch Lightning team. And this is an implementation of some large language models such as Stable, LM, and mostly more recently Falcon on based on Nano GPT, which is something that Andre Karpati has provided originally. So it supports fast attention, WAM adapters, and you can also fine tune and pre-train your large language models with this library. It has a very nice tutorial, and I'm going to show you something that is very simple in order to run this library. So first I'm cloning this, and then I'm going to install all of the available or the, all of the needed requirements uh, by installing from the requirements text file, Hungry Face Hub, and also I'm installing, since this is required, uh, a development version of PyTorch, which is 2.1. And then I'm going to install a custom version, uh, install this with the custom version that is provided by the Google Co-op for CUDA. So you can see the requirements here. It's a list of Lightning library tokenizers, etc. So it has all of the available libraries here. The next part after installing all the dependencies is to download a specific checkpoint and in this case, we're using Falcon 7B from the original repository on Hanging Face. And then we are using this convert Hanging Face checkpoint.py. So this is actually a script within the lit parrot repository. And you can go through this and have a look at the way that the authors of this library are actually merging or doing some transformations of the layers of the library. And in here, we have a specific version for Falcon. Yeah, so this is the copy weights Falcon. You can see that they have a weight map in order to do some optimizations of the weights for the layers. And first, the downloading is complete. And then they're processing both checkpoints since this Falcon B model is actually comprised of two binary files. And you can see that we have uh, some config of the file, such as the vocabulary size, padding, uh, layers, number of heads, 
and embedding size, etc. So this is provided to you. And then in order to do the generation, you can use this script, which is again from the original library. And here you can pass in the prompt, also the checkpoint directory, which is the downloaded model. And then I'm quantizing this using 8-bit floats and or eats. And you can see that this is pretty much reproducing the results that we or the config that we had previously. And I want to require only 20 new tokens. So this is again trying to replicate what we had thus far. So next, this is the output thus far from this. Uh, it takes some time, about four seconds to initialize the model. Now the library is actually loading the model and this took about 145 seconds. So they're setting the seed and then how can I create an account? What is my invoice area, etc. So this model is in no way trained on our FAQ dataset. So the response is vastly different compared to what we had before. And then it says the time for inference here, it is 3.87 seconds. So this is significantly slower to what we had in the loading of the transformers library. So even though those guys are doing some custom generation, at least on this experiment and this particular model, and without the QR adapter, mind you, we are receiving uh, this time for inference. And the memory that is using this is around 10 gigabytes of VRAM. So the lead pirate library is performing in such a way that at least for the our case with the QR adapter, uh, it is providing a better way to do the inference with the transformers library itself. In this video, we've seen a lot of techniques to improve the inference speed of your large language model. In our case, we've used the Falcon 7B fine-tuned with QR technique model. And we've seen that 8-bit loading from the transformers library is pretty much the best optimization that you can do. Of course, you need to check the outputs of your model and see whether or not the outputs are very good compared to what we had with the training config. Also, when you can do batch inference, this will probably speed up your workflow even faster or make it even faster. So this is dependent, of course, on your use case and whether or not you can use batch inference and caching probably. Also, we took a look at the lead parrot library, which didn't provide an improvement compared to the transformers library, what we had before. So this might be a great library to fine tune a model, but in this experiment on a T4 with the Google Co-op instance, uh, we can see that the loading the model with the transformers library is actually quite a bit faster. We've also seen that the torch compile doesn't work really well on the pet peft model wrapper and you can try to wrap with the torch compile your own large language model instead of the path model and try to see whether or not this works please let me down in the comments below thanks for watching guys please like share and subscribe also join the discord channel that i'm going to link down into the description and i'll see you in the next one bye